Hello, welcome. I'm Monia Gates, I'm the artist behind Color My Dreams. So nice to see all of you here. Hi, so nice to see you all here. I'm Monia Gates, I'm the artist behind Color My Dreams. I don't know what was going on there, but it went quiet for a bit. Hello, Karen. Hello, Paula. Hi, Wendy. Okay, so today I'm going to do the pools and the soft bouquet background. So, first of all, we're going to start with the pearls. Pearls are very reflective gemstones. So, there is lots of colors in them and it picks up the color around it. So, if you look at the pearl carefully, then you'll see you'll have the reflection of the light on the one side and the color that it will pick up. So if you wear pink clothes, there will be pink shining and the pool itself will pick up the pink. So that's why the colors that we've got here is many colors again, unfortunately. Hi, Rain. Hi, Pam. Welcome. Okay, so first of all, let me just move it up a bit so that you all can see. I'm going to start by adding 90% French grey, PC1076. <laughs> yes, Lizzie, you know, I love all the colours. I've got too many colours in my box. I love using all the colours. So first of all, I'm just drawing the shape. Let me just zoom in a bit so you can see. Just so that we can see what I'm doing. Let me just zoom it in some more. Okay, let's try again. Is that better? Hello, Emily. Welcome. Nice to see you here. Hi Paula. Okay, first I'm going to add I'm going to start with my white. Okay, so first of all we're going to add where the white is going to be because we don't want it to be covered completely. So because my light is coming from the left hand side, I will have a light shining reflection at the top and you will have a 
a off cast reflection at the right bottom section. Hi H. Wilson, hi again. Hi Mona. So, the uh, light that's coming from the left hand side, now I'm going to just add it onto the smaller beads or the smaller pearls that's around the neck. Hi Heather. So again, you have it at the bottom and at the top. So you will have two reflection spots on each of the round little beads or the pearls. And are you all ready for Spooktober? I'm very excited. I can't wait for Spooktober to start this weekend. And there will be so many amazing people streaming, like Emily and Karen and to name just a few, Shelley. Oh, and Belinda. And Sammy, I think, is also doing one. To name just a few, there's loads of them. But I've uh, posted the schedule in my group. Please go and have a look in Color My Dreams. I've posted the whole schedule with who's doing what images and what time. Yes, Emily, I've also darkened mine for Spooktober. <laughs> I think she is going to do one of mine later on, but for the weekend, it, uh, she's coloring somebody else's, I think. Hi, Connie. Yes, Connie is also streaming for Spooktober. But that's Belinda now that will be doing somebody else's image. So now I'm just doing all the light, all the white bits on the pools. All the reflect the highlight reflections. Okay, and now I'm just gonna add the darks because I like to fill in the mid tones. Hi Shannon. Welcome.
Okay, let's just see. I just had a, an attack of my keyboard. Hold on a second. Let me just move it up a bit. There we go. Hi Sonia. Okay, there we go. Now you can see both the pull sections. Okay, so now I'm using Sandbar Brown PC1094. So I've got the two light section dots here. Let me just zoom in a little bit more to the smaller one so that you can see what I'm doing first oh thank you Karen so I've got the dark section right next to the left hand light corner so first I'm darkening that section then this, this, why I'm doing that section is it forms almost the shadow of the item on the right hand side even though the light is coming from the left hand side Now on my right hand side of the pools, because your your bigger one of your bigger uh, pool is on your left hand side from this item here in the middle, it will cast the shadow onto the pool. So it's not necessarily now where the light is coming from. It's because the big object cast a shadow on it, but it still picks up the light from the top. So that's why the those um, highlights is not like this side on the left hand side it's more from the top And now I'm darkening it at the bottom of the pool, where the pool caused a shadow onto the skin. So it's on the outside, it's not in on the bead itself.
Okay, now the, at the bottom, we do the same, but because we don't have a shadow that the um, the brooch will cast onto skin, it will cast a slight shadow in between and onto the ribbon. Now we can add our mid-tone colors. So next up is Nectar, PC1092. Now because there's so much pink in the original image, like for example here, you'll see that the pink of the ribbon will be a reflection onto the pearls. And also you will get a reflection of the pink of the ribbon that will be picked up on the pearls here in the front. Oh, thank you, Pam. Yes, I've done a little bit dark nails for sp getting ready for Spooktober. Okay, so now we add the Nectar PC1092. So now I add the Nectar as my pink tone. Now on the left hand side, I will add it on the opposite side of where we've added the Sandbar Brown. So I will add it to my left hand side. And on your right hand side, you will add it onto the bottom section. So just below your sandbar brown and more towards the right hand side. Now on your big um, pull in the middle, your pink will be reflective here on top of the sandbar that I've added here and just on the left hand side of the thin line of the sandbar brown on your right. Let me just zoom out a bit.
Okay, so now the bottom brooch, we add the pink onto the shadow in between the bulls that forms the line. So just on the left hand side of the highlighted dot. Again on your right hand side like that. Now we're going to add Pale Sage, a PC1089. The Pale Sage, I will add, extend the highlight of the bottom of the pool. So just to brighten up your highlight at the bottom, I'm just quickly adding that. Now here at the top, I will add it on the right hand side of the white. So I'm softening the white that we've added in the beginning, but with the pale sage. And at the bottom, I'm slightly shading o or coloring over the sandbar brown that we've done. Now again at the bo bottom one, we're also just softening the highlight that we've added over the sandbar brown, slightly on the uh, right hand side of the pale sage and softening the highlight again at the bottom. And here you just enhancing the bottom of each pool. Next is eggshell BC140. Now I'm just adding some warmth to the pool itself. So I'm adding it in the middle of the main one and flattening it out. Oh. Yes, it would normally change on what, what you're wearing, but mostly you will have your two highlighted areas. Then your mid-tones will be either the pink or the blues or the greens. It also depends on the type of pull that you are wearing. You do get pink pulls, blue pulls, black pulls and green pulls. So this is the basic for coloring a pool. So where I've put the pink, you would add whatever other color you will be wearing.
Okay, and next up is our darker color, 90% uh, French gray. So now I'm going for a really dark color to give it a little bit more definition in between the pulls. So by adding the really dark color, you'll see it will start to stand out a little bit more. So the darkest area here at the bottom in the shadow. Then I also highlight just in between slightly But I'm not drawing a complete line. I'm just darkening the corner. Like a little triangle. And then just pull the line slightly across. But lightly the line slightly across. And then the triangle again. Like that. You see, this side stands out much more than on the uh, right hand side. Yes, Loretta, it can have a mirror type surface. Hi Gilly's Art, welcome. So, you'll see with, by, with adding the dark, the pulls stand out more. I will rework the lights back into it just now. So, with the bottom one, okay, with the bottom one, you have your dark more on the inside to give the diff the uh, shape of each pool and that will cast a slight shadow onto the big pool next to it.
Now I'm going back with the white. Now just to enhance on the big ones, the white section so that you can see the shine again. Next is Sky Blue Light, PC1086. Now I'm enhancing it a little bit more with the blue because that cools it down between the warm colors of the bowl. Okay, now um, we just need to add the shadows. Uh, Beige Sienna, PC1080. Now I'm just making the shadow a little bit more prominent. So I'm slightly adding it on, on the right hand side so that it can form the shape. Next is the sandbar brown. I'm just enhancing the bottom one shadow a little bit more because it's more in the shadow than the top one. And then grey green light, PC289. Now on the uh, steel part of the amulet, I'm just adding, because it's so small, it's very hard to do a full gradient shine, but you can do it if you've got very sharp pencils. But I've, I just need to highlight the rim of where the light falls. And next is 90% French grey and just draw the dark shadow line again.
Okay, now I'm going to zoom out and we're going to move over to the background. Thank you so much, Pam. So we're going to do the soft bouquet background. Everyone knows how to do a proper bouquet with all the round circles. Thank you, Sonia. But this time we're going to do a soft bouquet. So it's not completely in focus. It is a soft palette as well. So what I'll do is I'll start with the lightest dots and then we work out. So I've got a light one here. You decide where, where you want it. So how I do it is I press hard in the middle and then softer towards the outside. So you create a dot that's dark in the middle of whatever color you choose and then lighter of the same color that you choose. So hard again and then softer. So this, I'm just picking spots of where I would put my lightest color first. Or well, this is the way I do this um, lightly or out of focus bouquet. And here again, you press hard in the middle, the tiny circle in the middle, small, and then go wider, 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 and then soft, soft, soft. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> no problem. Then here we press hard again. See, that's the pressing hard part. And then we go softer and we shade it so that it fades away. So basically you've got a got a dark in the middle again and softer towards the outside. And I need another light one there. But it's up to you now where you put them. It's no set in stone. This is just the basics. So I want you to play around. Ne next time you can show me all sorts of different bouquets that you've done. This is just the basic on them. You can really go very intense into bouquet backgrounds. You get beautiful ones. Ones with grass and more faded details in it. But this is just a basic one. And this is a nice go-to if you're not sure what to do in the background, then you can always just add a bouquet. And it is very easy. You can do whatever colors you want. Okay, so now we've done white. Next is Cream PC914. So now I press hard again in the middle. Hard, hard, hard. 
and then shade it lighter towards the outside. Okay, that's cream. But now I would like some interest in my bouquet dots. So what I'm doing now is this is just a plain cream one. So because it's a darker color, it will fall back towards more towards the background. The white will be more towards the front. But now this one, I would like some interest. So I'm adding a cream rim. So in your, sh in your lightly shaded one, you've got the white in the middle. Now I'm adding very, with a light hand, I add cream on the outside. So this one I'm adding more cream on this one as well. There we go. And we add cream to this one. Just to make it interesting. And now we add cream once here. Also, it's up to you. You can do them wherever you feel like doing them. And you can make big ones and small ones. A bouquet never comes out exactly the same. So you can really just play around. And another one here. Okay, his shoulder would be here. Christine, it will work on any portrait and you can use any colors. I'm going to use greens now just to make it interesting. You can make dark colors as a background, soft, uh, soft colors, any colors you want to do in a bouquet. I'm just doing the highlighted dots. I'll show you now to cover some of them with color so that they will fall back so that you can get a three dimensional effect. Okay, now I'm just adding some dark ones, just like that. And I'm just playing around making different sizes. Okay, next up is eggshell PC 140. So now to create a little bit more interest in this instance, I will take some of my cream ones and darken half of it. So now I'm just for interest sake, I'm darkening one half of it.
So you can also play around with half circles. It doesn't have to be just in the middle and outside. You can also play around with upper and lower sections of that. Now I'm just showing you all these different techniques on the bouquet so that you can play around. There we go. And let's just add some smaller ones over this one. There we go. And we add another one here. But th with this, it's heavy handed. It's not light handed. So it's heavy in the middle, soft outside, or when you do just round circles, it's heavy handed. So there we go. Okay, let's take some greens for this one. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. <laughs> so now I'm going to add, oh, let's first do some Pile Sage runs. Pile Sage PC1089. So some of them I'm just giving a slight low of green. Just like that. Let's do some behind some of them. Okay, here's one behind. Mm, here's a smaller one. Here's a bigger one. Here's another one behind. There we go. Let's make this one bigger, give him a pale sage glow. And this one. Um, I prefer working from light to dark on this one, on, on the um, bouquet. I find it easier for when you do the background colors, then it's easy to push some back and bring some forward. That's why I start with the lightest color first on the bouquets. Next is Jade Green, PC1021. Okay, let's bring in some interest. We do some of the background. Okay, let's do... We color some of the background. We go like this. Oh, and here. Yeah. You don't need to do all the background. And we give the similar bluey greeny color here. See, so now first I've just added 
a basic color onto the background sections. Now, for example, yeah, let me just pull it down a bit. Now you can slightly go over the pale sage. So now you can see it changes it completely. It almost looks like a glow. And this is with a light hand now. Now this is not heavy handed anymore. Now your background is starting to be, instead of the uh, heavy handed like before, now this is soft to medium pressure. Now I want to show you here at the bottom. So for example, that one there, there's too much of the same color and you decide, okay, some of them I want to push back because we're going to do play with it so that some are on the background, some is in the foreground. It will be like a 3D effect. So here I'm just covering it lightly. See, so your plain cream has changed color. Or eggshell, whichever one we use there. Eggshell. So now I've pushed that one back. But you can still see it. But it is a different shade of the jade green. So it's jade green over the cream. It gives you another dimension. Um, let's get some beige sienna PC1080 just to change the colors up a bit. Now let's do this brownie pinky color here in the background. Now I'm going slightly over my jade green. See, so you can really do any color you want to. So now I'm slightly shading in this fady light one that we had here in the background. And so for example you decide, oh no, I really like it all to be more greeny. Okay, so let's add another color. Let's go 50% cool gray, PC1063. So let's just darken it. And now I've changed the color. See, this is much darker than what the bouquet circles are. So I want to show you how we can play around in this corner. Okay, this is medium to hard. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's dis uh, let's think. Okay, I would like this big one to fall back. It's too prominent. So now I'm going to go slightly with a light hand, go over them. Um, pushing it back. You see. You can still see it because it was a light color before. And now this one, for example, I want to be in front. I want this one to fall back. Now, also just covering this one slightly, lightly, light end. Just like that. Oops, I've gone over the flower, but don't worry. Oh, thank you so much, Jane. Okay, so now I'm going to play around with the same colors. And say, for example, you want to add another color here in between. Uh, let's do... What is a darker, darker green? Let's take green ochre, PC1091. So now I'm adding an even darker color. See, so your background also don't need to just be one color either. So now I've added, I've got jade green, I had the 50% grey, I had the beige sienna, and now I'm adding the green ochre, and that's all just in the background colours. That's not on really, the, the uh, little bubbles or circles was just the cream, eggshell, white, and pale sage. Okay, so now let's take Jade Green, BC1021. Now, there I've got a darker green. Let's soften the edge. Now, I'm softening the edge by going round and round softly with a light hand. And I'm softening the edge so that it can blend into the background. Now, this one I've I'm deciding to let it move back. Then you can cover it completely, but it can you can still see all of them. Now I'm covering some of them and some of them you can shade into the background by just fading the edges. And some you can just leave light and bright. And that's how you get the play of the different like 3D effect. Yes, 
Okay, let's let's change it up again. Now I've pushed it back and now I've decided no, I I actually like this one before. But let's try a different color. Now I'm going pale sage PC one zero eight nine. Now I'm going hard in the middle again and soften it toward a uh, lighter pressure towards the sides. Now I'm going pile search here. This one. I liked it there. So now I'm just bringing them back again. So you can really just play around and have fun. You, it's not a cast in stone. This is how you do it. You play around. You find your own technique. And it's easy. You can bring them back, push them, uh, uh, bring them forward, push them back. You can play around as you like the colors to be. Hi, Mandy. Welcome. Uh, this one is jade green again. Now by just adding that, what is this green that I had here before? Green ochre and now covering it with the same jade green as before, you create another color. Yes, you guys must try it. Hi, Sherry. So glad you're safe. Oh, don't worry, Sherry. Don't worry about it. We know what you meant. It's okay. Autocorrect sometimes catches me out. Uh, next is Pile Sage, PC1089. See, so you can really just play around with all your colors. I'm so glad you feel better, Mandy. And say, so for example, you decide that you like to lighten the background. Now, for interest sake, um, let's just lighten that here. Now, I've decided, no, I want it a little bit lighter. Then you can lighten it. I still got the pearl sage in my hand, but by just going over all the circles, you can make a big circle with the highlight. So you can really play around and getting get a lot of 3D circles going.
Yes, it, it, the soft backgrounds normally let the skin stand out more. Um, Mandy, as I said before, I normally use my lights like the white, the cream, the eggshell and then that is my circles that I form in the beginning. Then you can add any color to your background, different uh, colors, blues, greens, browns, whatever you feel like. And then you cover some of them so that they shade in. For example, what I did here, let's do even a darker one. Let's do this green ochre so I can show you. So here is a, is a dark color. Um, I'm softening the edge, for example. Um, it looks more complicated than what it is, but it's really very forgiving to do this background. So whenever an artist or somebody is stuck, then it's easy just to do a bouquet background. It always works in portraits. Um, it's easy if you don't, if it's too light, darken it. If it's too dark, lighten it. So, say for example, as I did earlier, Okay, let's do, this is now a really dark one. Let's really darken it. I want to show you how you can play around in dark. So it doesn't have to be light like this side. And, oh, this is green ochre, PC1091. Okay. Yes, Wendy, you can add reds, purples, whatever color you want to do. But I just normally keep my different variations of my lighter tones. Keep it in the creams and the whites and the pile sages round about there. So that when you cover it with any dark color, then it's easy to see through and easy to fade in. Oh, thank you so much, Rena. And the eggshells. Okay, so now I've made a really dark one. Let me show you. So now I've got a dark green. Here we go. And I'm shading it into light. Okay. So. So here's my circles that I did before. I had my, let me just take all my colors. Okay, so let's play in this dark area. Okay, so first of all, some of the circles you would like to push back and some must stand up in front. So, what I'm doing is, now this one was cream before, say it's small and I want it pushed back. Now I'm going with a light hand, go over it. So there, I've pushed one back. 
Now this one is pale sage. Now I'm pushing this one back as well. Now I'm pushing this one back. So now uh, this one is pushed back a little bit more than this one. Now, so for example, this one I want the edges to be softened. Now I'm softening the edges. I'm going slightly over the edges and I'm just announcing the middle. So now this pile sage one here, I um, also want to push this one back. Here we go. Now I've decided this one can also go back for my more 3D textured effect. And say for example, now you've seen, oh no, I actually don't want so many back. I want some to come forward again. So let's just do this one a soft one, a soft edge as well. Okay, so now I've pushed a lot back and now I decide that some must come back to the front again. So, say for example we take eggshell. Okay, the eggshell, now I'm going to just go softly around the edge and go into the front. Now this one I decided, no, this one I'm going to enhance much more. Press hard in the middle and then out to the front, to the outside, sorry, to the outside. Okay, now I'm going to take Pale Sage, PC1089. Now this one I'm just going to cover with Pale Sage. A solid medium pressure. And now I see now it's now too light. Now you can just add a little bit more of your uh, green ochre again. But this one is standing out more than what that one is, for example. Now I've decided that this this one here needs to be pale sage. Now I've I've I'm covering my what with pale sage, for example. But now I'm just playing around with greens here. Now we shade in this one. Give it a little bit more definition here. Now I've decided, okay, I want a little bit of warmth. So now I've decided this one needs to be cream. So this is cream. I'm adding cream. Now I decide to add a little small water dots. Now I take grey green light, BC289. And the lighter you make them, the more they will come to the front. So, say for example, this is a dark spot. Now, I'm going to press hard in the middle. And softer towards the outside. And you can see, even if you've got flat dark color, you can 
still add more. So you can add and take away as you go. This is a very forgiving background. Hi Maribel, welcome. So then you can also, I can keep this, this dark on this side. Let's just take this green ochre and just shade it slightly into my other colors. So there's no need to change the colors. So I'm just carrying on with this uh, green ochre. So now I'm just extending it into the other side of the background. Thank you so much, Maribel. So now I'm just extending it so that they all sort of fits. <laughs> so your background colors doesn't have to be just one color or just two colors. You can really just play around and pick up all the colors you want. And here, say for example, I'm covering this one make it really dark and you think oh no now I've covered it and but I actually needed to add a little bit more summing here so let's just quickly cover it like this okay we can shade it a little bit into there Okay, so now I've got a flat dark area here. So you can still, um, say for example, I take eggshell. It, you can take any of your lighter colors. It doesn't have to be eggshell. But I take eggshell, PC 140. You press hard in the middle again, hard. And then slightly as your circle go wider, you make lighten the pressure so the I've added one and then here I'm adding another one See, so you can really, that some of them are on the back, some of them are on the front. You can play around. You can soften all of them completely and have no round lines. You can basically just uh, soften the outlines and then they will all become like fady color. Like this. And say this one I want to add cream. You press hard in the middle, softer towards the outside. Oh, 
and there we go. So you can really just play around with all your different colors. So you can either keep them like that or you can let them jump forward or go back. And that's your basics that you can learn in bouquet uh, basic coloring. Bouquet you can also get a very very difficult intrigued where you have like secondary shadows that plays a factor in between the bouquet but for straightforward bouquet it's very forgiving it's an easy background to do with uh, portraits and it always work so let's quickly do a page giveaway you can choose a number between one and a hundred and the closest to the number wins doesn't matter over or under the closest to the number will win the page and it will be uh, any page from my Etsy shop yes Mandy it is actually really fun and you can play around and it's very forgiving and there's not, nothing like mistakes you just play around and have some fun Is all the numbers in? Not yet. Yes, Loretta, you can also use the, this for the ghost images in the background. You are quite right. Okay. Is all the numbers in? Okay, so the numbers in. Everybody, all the numbers going, going. Okay, the lucky number is 92. Who's the closest?
Who's closest? Is it Caroline? Congratulations, Caroline. You won a free page. You can choose any page from my Etsy shop and you can PM me. And that's it for tonight. Um, next week, or this uh, Saturday, I will be doing a Spooktober stream. I'm doing my aged skin. And it will be 10 o'clock my time. And again on Sunday, Sunday it will be 11 o'clock a.m. my time. But I will post it on the groups. And then I will carry on finishing the page next week, Wednesday. Thank you, Shannon. But you can make them ovals, Michelle. You don't need to make circles. You can make them ovals if you want to. And thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Mom, for being Mamod. Thank you for each and everyone that came and watched. I hope to see you on Saturday and on Sunday. For Spooktober, I will post my image, that my aged skin. I've uh, finished my face, so I will show off what I will be doing. Yes, see you, Karen. Karen is also streaming. Please go check out her stream. Connie is also streaming. To name just a few, please go, go to the list. I've, I've posted a schedule of everybody that will be streaming. So please go and check it out on my group. And Belinda is streaming. Sammy is streaming. Ellie is streaming, to name just a few. Thank you all so much for being here. Bye-bye. Have a great day further or a great evening further. See you on sun Saturday and Sunday. Yes, Marilyn, I do have a Facebook group. It's uh, Color My Dreams, Adult Coloring, uh, for uh, and a, 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 and I've got a patron a private group, but that's only for patrons. But I've got uh, uh, the Color My Dreams one is for everybody. The schedule is on there, the events is on there, everything is on there. Bye-bye, everyone. Good night.